my dear friends welcome to rajshekar classes on applied data science with python this is lecture number 591 in this lecture i will continue my discussion on tensor flow and keras you might wonder what is there with name if you look at the name the name has two parts tensor and flow my understanding why they named it as tensor flow let's let's understand what is the tensor first tensor is basically a mathematical term what it means is this let's have a vector uh, let's have a vector this is a vector of numbers isn't it a vector is called one dimensional tensor isn't it in similar manner if we have 2d matrix let me say this is a 2d matrix of values this is called 2d tensor suppose if i have 3d matrix let me say this is this is 3d matrix just see what is this this is 3d matrix yes this is 3d matrix isn't it the the three dimensional matrix of numbers basically a grid of numbers this is called i can call it as 3d tensor isn't it so on so forth so you can think of tensor as programmer programmer can think tensor as an n dimensional array that's the simplest way to think about it the core thing in deep learning if you look at deep learning we operate we make lots of operations on vectors and matrices and 3d tensors isn't it that's why that's why tensor in a nutshell tensor is generalization of your simple concepts like vector like matrix like 3d tensor of data points so just just these are different um, the pictures i collected this is 1d tensor 2d tensor 3d tensor 4d tensor 5d tensor 6d tensor isn't it so i can say for so for deep for deep learning is all about tensor operations because tensor is generalization term to your simple structures like uh, one dimensional vector two dimensional matrix three dimensional matrix isn't it so deep learning does tensor operations the word flow isn't it even you can see here scalar number 1 vector 1 comma 2 it's a vector matrix tensor isn't it what is this tensor is a multi dimensional array that's the tensor part of the name the, a, a, again what is the, the flow part is data being acted upon and upon as it flows through the neural network or other machine learning algorithms what is this flow let's try to understand flow flow i think is inspired from back propagation because what are we doing in back propagation or even in forward propagation we are flowing inputs towards outputs and we are flowing back derivatives from output to input so tensor because we are operating on tensors all operations in deep learning are operations on tensors flow i think inspired from back propagation because if you think about we flow from input to output that's important we flow from input to output whenever uh, input to output whatever input we provide multiplied by weights and perform bunch of operations before we get output isn't it then from output to input there is a flow of derivatives so so we have to readjust our weights so this is this is i think one of the inspiration very very uh, interesting name actually is it, isn't it just see tensor tensor flow code is in, is intricate and it gives you lot of low level control on the code literally you can define a new model if you want you can define a new model from the scratch suppose instead of relu activation function you want to define a new activation function or you want to control how the execution happens so tensor flow gives you lot of low level control and hence the code is typically 
if the code is typically longer the amount of code that you write in tensorflow is longer and lot of and lot of people trust me when i started using tensorflow i i i was thoroughly confused with what is happening in tensorflow it requires lots of patience it requires lots of patience to learn please bear with me so tensorflow requires lots of uh, it requires lots of patience and it requires you to read lots of code of lot read lots of lots of code of others to understand how to code well in tensorflow it's a very 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 well confusing especially if you just get started with yourself because i spent a couple of months getting getting comfortable with tensorflow and you need to practice you need to practice a lot so so that you get a good a good feel of tensorflow of course it's an it's very very important for machine learning there is a learning curve i can say there is a learning curve you need to spend good amount of time for learning tensorflow practicing tensorflow isn't it you need you, you need to spend good amount of time for learning tensorflow practicing tensorflow so that you will become comfortable so what people have done here if the if the learning curve is steep what is this learning curve this learning curve is, is steep people said is there a better way to do it so there is a parallel project called keras the core idea of keras is can we make coding for deep learning extremely simple isn't it can we what is the core idea of keras can we make coding for deep learning extremely simple it should be as simple as of scikit learn can we make it extremely simple like uh, uh, sql uh, learn or scikit learn but what happens in keras is it is high level i can say keras is high level neural network library it is not low level library like uh, it's not it's not uh, low level library like tensorflow so you don't get control over all the small and small details but you only require control over low level details if you are a researcher isn't it if you are a researcher then you you need you need low level uh, you need low level controls most most practitioners if you are a developer isn't it if you are develop you if you are developing solutions or if you are develop deploying solutions we don't require to change low level structures a lot isn't it if if you are a researcher yes that's why researchers love tensorflow but if you are building uh, deep level based solutions to real world problems all you need basically high level neural network library because you just want to define a structure define a, a network and start doing training and it is extremely easy to learn it is this is it is extremely easy to learn and you require significantly fewer lines of code that's important keras uh, keras significantly uh, signif uh, it requires significantly uh, fewer lines of code i will show you some examples uh, which shows that keras is like very simple and easy to understand actually the way keras operate internally is this so the so the user suppose if if i am the user the user writes the code using keras let me let me assume user right user is writing the code using keras is it, is it if i am a user if i am the user the user writes the code using keras but keras internally uses other libraries like tensorflow that's important keras internally uses other libraries like tensorflow uh, tensorflow at the end of the day code has to be executed developing something like tensorflow requires thousands and thousands of hours of phenomenal programmers so keras said why should i re why should i rebuild e rebuild everything that tensorflow build i will just build one more layer on top of it so that the so that the programmers programmers actually writes code in keras but keras internally convert the code into tensorflow code and all the execution happens from the tensorflow code because tensorflow has been optimized like crazy with some of the best engineers in the world so 
Keras, you can think of that as high-level neural network. I can say your Keras is high-level neural network library built on top of the libraries like TensorFlow, isn't it? So this is called uh, this this is called this is called front end, isn't isn't it? Keras is called as front end in this case. This is called um, no, Keras is front end, isn't front end of my solutions, isn't it? Instead of writing in back end, I am writing in Keras, making much much simpler. Here Keras is front end, TensorFlow is back end. There are other back uh, back ends for Keras. When it, when Keras was launched, Tiano yes, when Keras is start uh, launched, Tiano is very popular deep learning library. The uh, the another python based library very very popular library so when keras was built initially they have both tiano backend and tensorflow backend there are there are many many other very popular deep learning library just like uh, uh, just like tensorflow just like tensorflow you have other themes like uh, uh, Tiano, there is something called as cafe. There is something. Uh, the, uh, uh, there is something called. There are there are other. I can say TensorFlow have other uh, other themes like. The, there is something. There is something called. Uh, anyway, let me um, repeat. There are many. There are uh, many many other very popular deep learning libraries just like TensorFlow. Just like TensorFlow, you have other themes like Tiano. There is something called cafe, isn't it? There is uh, something like PyTorch, isn't it? More recently, something like MXNet from Amazon, isn't it? So there are lots of very nice tools right now. My personal favorite is TensorFlow because I have spent a lot of time learning TensorFlow, and it has, and uh, and TensorFlow has uh, some of the best functionalities. Keras is the high level library i can say keras is a high level library that can talk either to tensorflow or uh, tiano and what what what's happening most recently is google has been spending lot of time on keras itself remember all of these are open source projects anybody can con contribute to the back to this code uh, code base isn't it back to the code base of keras what happened to keras 2 what is my keras 2 Keras 2 is the second version of Keras. Keras 2 is much more deeply integrated with TensorFlow. And in addition to high level mo modifications to your neural network, Keras 2 will give you sm small, will give you some, some low level controls also, isn't it? Yes, it, it gives you some low level controls also. The, re the reason Keras 2 has deeply integrated with TensorFlow because Google realized that lot of people who actually develop real world solutions and deploy real world solutions actually prefer Keras over TensorFlow. Probably lot of Google engineers uh, prefer Keras over TensorFlow when they are doing simple production, when they when they are applying some of the deep learning techniques to solve real world problems. That's why Google has spending lot of time on Keras more recently trying to make it deeply integrated with tensorflow so that so, so that so, so that if you are a researcher you will end up using tensorflow if you are a practitioner of deep learning if you are an applied guy you probably use keras there is also a, a nice blog for reference in uh, in this section this is the, anyway I, I will provide this particular blog this link i will provide in description section as well as in comment section uh, just go through this blog this is a nice blog uh, I, I i can say this is a nice blog which says uh, which says should we learn tensorflow or keras the summary of blog is nice i really like this the summary is if you are not, if you are not doing uh, if you are doing some research just see if you are doing some research uh, research purpose work or uh, developing some special kind of neural networks uh, then then go for then go for uh, uh, keras just just go through this particular blog because it is super easy to build extremely complex models that's that's a uh, that's a not not uh, not nutshell in a nutshell as far learning is concerned we, we will learn about we learn both tensorflow 
and Keras. It is important to learn both of them. Probably 95% of time, 90, probably 95% of time you, you end up writing code in Keras. Only 5% of time you might end up writing code in TensorFlow. But it is important to know both of them because a lot of learning happens by reading others code research a uh, lot of learning happens by reading others codes and research papers and blogs because i personally learned a lot of deep learning by reading research papers code that others have written lots of very very brilliant blogs that's how i actually learned deep learning in addition to reading some books most of the deep learning that i got by uh, by reading others code other research uh, research papers and blogs lot of people especially researchers lots of blogs also they actually write code in tensorflow the re the reason being tensorflow the tensorflow gives them far more low level control so if you if you if you uh, if a new algorithm is launched properly implementation of algorithm is in tensorflow and not in keras uh, and not in keras first it is important to be able to learn tensorflow even though if if you if you may write uh, 5% code in TensorFlow, 95% of the time, 95% uh, of the time you are writing uh, code in Keras. If you, if you wanted to read other solutions, other code blogs or research, research papers, it is useful to know TensorFlow, the structure of TensorFlow code. You need not expect, you need, you need not expert in TensorFlow, but having some knowledge will help you to read other scores blogs because my own person, my own personally speaking, I actually write almost 95% of my code in, in Keras because I, I, I don't do fundamental research. I do a lot of applied work. So what ha what's happening right now is in my, in my own, I can, I can say, in in my own space i spent 95 percent of time on keras five percent of time on tensorflow i still use tensorflow today because when i read others research papers blogs or some code code on github i actually know i actually know tensorflow so that it is much easier to understand on what's happening i request all of you to go through this particular lecture on tensorflow and keras if you have any difficulty please keep a comment thank you very much